Hello and welcome to today's Living Word. I'm Dwayne Matz. We're continuing in the book of Isaiah, chapter 3, looking at verse 12. And pardon me while I open a can of worms. Isaiah 3.12 says this, As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O oh, my people, those who lead you cause you to err and destroy the way of your paths. So that's Isaiah 3.12. Like I said at the beginning, pardon me while I open a can of worms. The Lord is speaking through Isaiah says, as for my people, let's call them believers. As for my believers, children are dictating their actions. It's all about the kids. It's getting to the point where schools need air traffic controllers with all the helicopter parents around. Look at the average day planner of parents these days. Keep them busy, keep them occupied. That'll keep them happy and fulfilled. It's gotten so bad that never mind biology, we are allowing our children to determine whether they are male or female. And we'll do whatever it takes to their God-given bodies to give them their wishes. Children have, in a sense, become oppressors, driving the behavior of the parents instead of parents guiding the behaviors of their children. Then there's the matter of women ruling over men. It's not to say that women aren't capable leaders. They are. But it's just not the way of God's created order. First of all, it's not the path that he intended for men and women in marriage. Ephesians 5, 22 and following says, Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is head of the wife, as also Christ is head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. The same submission follows in the church. 1 Corinthians 11, 3 says, but, but I want you to know that the head of every man is Christ, the head of woman is man, and the head of Christ is God. Now, to the women that are listening today or reading this blog, I say this, I don't blame you. Men have, in many cases, abdicated their leadership responsibilities. The problem is as old as Adam leaving Eve to deal with the serpent on her own. From the moment of that original sin, God told us plainly there would always be a struggle between man and woman and leadership. Genesis 3.16 says, To the woman he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. Understand the battle. Resist it and seek to carry out headship in the way God has ordained it. Men, step up to the plate and lead. Not with an iron fist, that's not the way to lead. But lead as Christ leads his bride, the church. Willing to give yourself up for the love of your woman. I believe the recent rise in transgenderism and the whole LGBTQ movement is a direct result of the confusion of the roles of men and women in God's created order. It's been coming for years when men abdicated their responsibilities of leadership and confused their God-given roles. The Lord said, hey, let me show you what happens when you acquiesce to giving up your God-given roles of leadership and submission. And now we have gender confusion to the max. It's all over the place in our world today. The solution? Back to the drawing board. I mean, it's the same for all sins. Repentance. Men, confess your lack of true Christ-like leadership and start to lead as Christ leads his church. And women, be willing to accept your God-given role as a submissive helpmate to the man. I'm Dwayne Matz, and that's today's Living Word.